Welcome to another moment in the Word. Do you find it difficult to be patient, to wait on the Lord? I'm reminded of the words of Isaiah, In returning in rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And then he says these words, And you would not. Waiting on the Lord is really hard. And that's what we find in the book of Acts, chapter 1. We're looking at verses 4 and 5. And here our Lord is going to command his disciples to wait. Well, here's how it reads. Verse 4. And we're in chapter 1. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which he had said unto them, and they had heard from Jesus, from me. And John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. As we look at the very beginning, it begins with Chi in the Greek, is and translated in the English. And it's a thought. It's a continuing thought. It's not a new thought. That's the idea here. He is connecting what he had said in the verses prior. And in the verse prior, it is saying that Jesus had, during 40 days, shown himself alive physically alive in various ways, even eating and talking and walking with them. And he had even broken bread with them. And in any event, he had shown himself alive after these 40 days. And so that's the connection. Now, he has taken himself from Galilee up north, and he's now in Jerusalem. And this is the final time he will be with his disciples. And being assembled together, that's the disciples, that's the eleven. Remember, Judas had hung himself because he regretted what he had done in betraying Jesus. He didn't repent. If he had repented like Peter, he perhaps would have been very different. His outcome would have been different. He would have been forgiven, and he would have been among the twelve. But it is now the eleven. They've assembled together. The word that's used there is a very interesting word in the Greek. It's not the typical word that is used for like synagogue, the Greek word, which means to come together. This is the word sunlizo, which has the idea of there is a purposeful gathering together. There is a meeting convocation, Jesus has called it, the, the suffix, or the, the, yeah, the suffix, lizo, has the idea of salt, possibly, which would then mean that, that they had a dinner or a, a, a very intimate meeting together. Regardless, it is used in a military setting. It's this idea that they have purposefully come together. Jesus has called them because we find this is either in the passive voice or the middle voice, and that just simply means they're not the one that affected this coming together. They are responding to, that would make it passive entirely, or else in the middle voice, they had submitted and Christ had called. That's still happening today. That's what's happening in your life. What God is doing in your life is he doesn't just zap you. He's not just coming in and taking over. There is a submission on your part. You have to yield to him. And it's in the yielding that you find that his grace and his sufficiency in meeting not just the needs of your life, but the purpose for which he has called you. And so they have assembled together. He has assembled with them, and now he commands them. And this word, this is the final command. There's many commands that he has made up to this point. But now this is his final command to his disciples. And he is this word that is used is a word that is of a dispatch. It's a military term again. It is of communicating a, a directive that they are to then obey. And what is that directive? That they should not depart from Jerusalem. That tells us they are in Jerusalem. 
And they are now on the Mount of Olives. They are gathered together. This is the place that they had met with Jesus many times before in prayer. This is on the evening in which Jesus was crucified, that he had sweat great drops of blood. Now there is such an excitement, such a thrill, such an anticipation that Jesus is with them. But what is going to happen now after 40 days of personally interacting with them and them being convinced he is risen, that he says to them, don't leave, stay here in Jerusalem. But remember, Jerusalem is the place that before they knew going to Jerusalem, bad things would happen. They had always tried to avoid Jerusalem. Now Jesus is telling them, I'm leaving you, but I want you to stay here. Do you feel that where God has put you is not a safe place? Do you feel threatened by the circumstances that you're in and that it seems like Jesus has left you and that you're abandoned and you're all alone? Well, there's something here that we can take of the disciples' experience and put it into our own lives because we find that he is telling them not just to remain in Jerusalem, but he's also telling them to wait. Waiting is active. Waiting is engagement. You remember that passage in Isaiah 40, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. To wait, the Hebrew word means to entwine. And what are we entwining? You're taking your spider web and you're entwining it around God's massive cable. His strength is immeasurable. It's omnipotent. That means that it is all powerful. And then you take your power. Well, you have no power. I have no power. It's our weakness. We wrap our weakness around his strength. That's what waiting is. Waiting is not so much an anticipation of what am I going to be able to see God do that's going to please me. No, it is where during this time I'm acknowledging my weakness, my dependence on him and how great he is and rejoicing in the Lord while I wait. And so he says, but wait for what? Wait for the promise of the Father. Oh, that is so wonderful. The promise of the Father. Notice that Jesus is telling them to wait, and the waiting is based on the Word of God. It's based on His promises. Oh, but which one? God has made many promises. He has made literally thousands of promises in the Scriptures. So now which one? Well, Jesus goes on and he says that you heard from me. Well, what did they hear from him? Well, this is so interesting because Jesus, when he was in the upper room, that's chapter 14. And then he says in chapter 15, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you'll bear much fruit. But then in chapter 16, he talks about the whole power of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is going to enable you to have the fruit, to continue and to be a witness. In fact, in chapter 16, he says, it's expedient for you that I go away, because if I go away, I'll send you another comforter. And that other comforter is Jesus, but his spirit. And the spirit of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. But remember, this isn't the Trinity. This is the whole of who God is. God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You see it here in this passage. You find that it is Jesus that's called the meeting together. He's given them a dispatch. He's told them to wait. The waiting is for the promise. The promise is the Holy Spirit. The Father had made it, and Jesus had stated it. We find in the book of Isaiah and in chapter um, 44, where he says that, um, for I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground, and I will pour my spirit upon, and it's the seed of Israel, my blessing upon your offspring. But that's not the only place. Many times do we find this. 
in Joel chapter 2, we find that he says that there would be a pouring out of his spirit. Verse 28 of chapter 2, and it shall come to pass afterward, after that is the deliverance and regathering of Israel to its land, the dry bones coming together, the ossuary now has become a place of great resurrection in the gathering. But it's not stopping there. There will be the bones not just coming together, but the Spirit of God within Israel. And it says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons, and this is Israel, and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men, they also shall see visions. And also upon your servants and upon the handmaids. In those days I will pour out my spirit. And then we find in Acts chapter 2, that's the same verse that, I, that Peter quotes in his message on Pentecost. And so what is it? The promise of the Father? Yes, it was the promise of Messiah. But then when Messiah is crucified and taken up, he is sending his spirit. That was a promise that God the Father had given. We're to wait, and the waiting Israel had been taught earlier when they were in the wilderness for 40 years. They would wait for the Shekinah, and when the Shekinah glory, the cloud by day, that pillar of fire by night, when it moved, that's when they moved. And when it stopped, that's when they stopped. Where was it going? It wasn't about the destiny. It was about learning dependence on God and worshiping Him and glorifying Him. And that's what you're experiencing in your life now. When the Spirit of God moves, you move. And then when the Holy Spirit tells you to stop, you stop. So now we go from there. And we find in verse 5, this is Acts 1 now, that he says, and it's hote in the, in, the, in the Greek, and that means for, but it's for this reason. In other words, you're to wait, wait for the promise. Why? Because there's a purpose, and the purpose is John had baptized. Now, John's name, Johann, this name means gracious. The Lord is gracious, or the gift of God. But regardless of how you look at that and translate that, it is by God's grace that we have the promise and the prophecies that were given in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, that now prepare us for Messiah and then the reception of the Holy Spirit. So here's how he says it. He says, John truly baptized with water. Now what is water? Water is not living. Water is inert. But water gives the ability for things to live. You need water. It is the preparation. It's the outward working and cleansing of a, it's a symbol of what was happening in the person who had repented. The repentance is of the heart. John's baptism was an outward expression of what was going on inside. But John, he baptized with water, but the one who followed after him baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. What is the purpose now? We find that the cleansing is not just symbolic. It's not just external, but it is real and it's internal. And there must be a cleansing within. And it is that cleansing within that enables you to serve God. Now, that promise that was given, we find it many times. We find it in Matthew chapter uh, 10 and verse 20, that whatever was said didn't come from the disciples' thoughts. It didn't come from their heart. Jesus said it came from the Holy Spirit. And what is happening now in your life and in your ministry, what you're doing and what you're saying, if you're yielded to him and you've allowed the spirit of God to cleanse you and you've drawn near to him, he will draw near to you and the result will be 
that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, and that, John says, is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is preparing them, preparing them for what will happen shortly, because that's what he says in just a few days. It'll be 10 days that they will have to wait, but they're waiting for what God is doing in them. They don't know it's only a promise at this point. For you, are you waiting? For all of us who truly know the Lord, we're waiting for his return, the blessed hope. But all who wait on him and have this promise, John says, they purify themselves even as he is pure. Have you been saved? Have you acknowledged Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Have you yielded to him? Is there any part of your life that you've not surrendered to him? And if so, that is something you need to do now. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the promises that you give us. And there are so many. Yea and amen. And yet, Father, there is a promise that our Lord is making here. A necessity that not only these 11 had, but the Father we need today. We need the continual cleansing and filling of your Spirit. We need, Father, the Holy Spirit in order that we can do your work. We cannot do it in the flesh. It must be by your Spirit. Thank you, Father. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.